Cause Da Vinci. <laughs> What's good, everyone? I know it's been a little while since I did a little video. Whew, man, it's been about five months or something like that. It's been a little while. Last little video I did was for me moving from a Snyder to F2F. And boy, can I say it's uh, been different. Um, I'm no longer with F2F. Now, I'm going to make it short and simple. Um my thoughts about F2F and um, what the issue I just had with them um, I would say about a week ago okay not about a yeah about a week and a half two ago whatever so I went to F2F in August of last year and I ended up leaving in December because the market was just trash I'm just going it's just trash so I ended up leaving F2F and the experience was an experience in itself. F2F wasn't um, bad um, as well. They wasn't bad. They're not a bad company. What makes F2F um, somewhat hard to be with is the other drivers. Now, what I mean is basically when you have everyone working off of your um, MC number, meaning if let's just say the 500 drivers that they have, when everyone's working off your MC, one person gets bad and everybody gets ding basically. So one person doesn't, um, how can I say it? One person doesn't complete a load on time, then it can go against F2F's MC. Uh, one person fails a low, goes against their MC, but once that does, the brokers put that negative mark against the MC, which means basically the, the brokers won't work with you. So it was so many times where, you know, I book a load and, you know, get the load booked and, you know, the rates were just, just very bad, period. Anybody who's out there knows the rates are terrible. I went at a terrible time and I was thinking to myself once I get my truck paid off I would think about going back but after what just transpired a week ago no and I'm gonna get into that here in a minute so um when I went to F2F I got a brand new trailer brand new right out the fresh out the shop like that day it came out the shop they called me told me hey you can either come down to Tennessee Chattanooga and get this trailer um, trailers we got a trailer pool down in Tennessee um, which is I think it was like seven hours away from my house or something like that probably more than that and or you can go pick up this brand new trailer at uh, in Lafayette Indiana brand new so I said okay I, I'll just go pick the brand new trailer up. it wouldn't really matter you know, trailer fee is going to be the trailer fee. So, went and picked the trailer up, brand new, 2023 trailer, had it for three months. Now, another downside about F2F is um, people, not F2F, let me rephrase that. People who used to work for F2F um, and the programs that they have, okay? And what I mean is the people that used to work for FTF, they're really starting to do fraudulent, I ain't gonna say fraudulent things, but we had, while I was there, they had an incident where a guy who no longer worked for F2F was getting rate cons and, um, you know, basically trying to, you know, make F2F pay for them leaving in a way that they did. It's neither here or there because how it basically works is F2F, you book with the broker, the broker sends you the Raycon from there, then you go, you send it to F2F, F2F signs it and then sends it back to you. The flaw in that system is you can get the Raycon to you, you can get it signed by yourself and then send it right back to the broker and never go pick the load up and you will screw F2F over. So it's a flawed system, okay, but it's not really because they won't 
put the load on you unless you look at the Raycon first. So I don't know. They need to find a way to fix that um, so that people don't receive the Raycon. I mean, I don't know how you're going to do it. I, 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 I don't know because you need to see the Raycon in order to agree to it before F2F signs off on it to get it back. So it's it's a little kind of a flawed system. I don't know. It's just really a flawed system, kind of, but not really. Um, but to get into reason, um, the reason why I left, it was just, it was just, it was just the rates were just too terrible, man. It, it's times where you book a load and then you gotta, you send out twenty emails, twenty phone calls just for one broker to mess with you. And it's more or less the bigger people like C.H. Robinson, Uber Freight, um, was a TQL, um, you know, things like that. They don't have um, Amazon anymore because people mess that up, um, not being on time and stuff like that. So Amazon basically said, nah, we ain't messing with y'all. Um, they do have some dedicated stuff. Uh, I think it's called Direct. I think I'm not 100% sure. Now, they right before I was leaving... You know, they wanted to, you know, if I see if I would switch my mind, you know, about staying is they got this um, program where they have their own people book the loads for you and deal with the brokers only. So it sounded good. But to me, I just like, nah, I'm not I'm not about to continue to do this. Like, nah, I'm good. So I end up leaving now. I end up leaving. I end up. So I called, I let them know, like, hey, you know, this is going to be my last week, you know, and they said, okay, thanks for letting us know. A, girl, a guy called me back. It's like, a, I ain't going to say an exit interview or not like that, because that's not what it is, but kind of. And he was like, basically, get your trailer inspected before you turn it back in. So cool. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I think I got it. I, I'm not for certain on the time or day I got it. I want to say I got it done, like, on the second or the third of December the inspection and I turned the trailer in like on the fourth or the fifth so those times are gonna be tricky I, if I remind myself I'll go ahead and put them up on here but this is what the part where I just said I would never go back okay so mind you three months now you got your escrow okay you, you putting in money into your escrow every week I think it was a hundred bucks a week okay now they sent me a bill for 500 something dollars saying that the trailer never had a DOT inspection, which it did, that um, the ABS light never worked, the trailer never been greased ever, that might just a 2023 trailer, and it's only been three months. Um, as well that the brakes were locked up on it. Mind you, I dropped it in the beginning of December. They didn't even think about expecting it to the almost the want to say the middle of January. Okay, so she was like, "Well, um, if you can't show me proof that you got a DOT inspection, that we're going to take the five hundred dollars out of your last settlement." So I said, "Okay." I sent her the proof. They still took the five hundred dollars. No matter what, she tried to say that. Well, it's your responsibility to check to tr make sure the trailer is good and good work in order before you turn it back in. I said, that's what the DOT inspection is for. So I don't get it because I got to. I actually changed the tire because one tire was running kind of ragged. So I changed the tire, and I think it had like a, a gash or a small, maybe a pinhole, maybe. Um, on one of the tires, they said that it was still passed, but I said, nah, I'm not even going to take a chance. So I went ahead and got a change. So my thing is you wasn't going to pay me period. You told, she told me over the phone that we need to bill it to somebody and it's going to be you. And I said, what's the reason for getting a DOT inspection? If I pass a DOT inspection and turn the trailer in the day after it passed and they check all that, how is it that your people 
which isn't really your people. It's some third per third party who's just trying to find a way to get money from you guys. Who charged me five hundred something dollars to zip tie a light? Somehow, uh, ABS light ain't working, and to cage open some brakes, and they said to grease it. Five hundred something dollars to do all that, but when I showed her basically the DOT inspection. They still just charge me the five hundred. So that right there is the reason why I don't I don't recommend nobody going because at the end of the day, if you do everything right, you still get played in the end. So I'm here now. I'm at JB Hunt. Plus, right now, contract I, for me, contract freight is just the way to go. Dropping hooks. I'm doing more loads per week. I'm back up to where I want to be. Um, home every other weekend instead of being out three weeks at a time. I'm making the money I need to. I'm staying up in the Northeast, even though with all this snow, everything is good at JB. It ain't, you know, it ain't Snyder. Snyder and JB is the same thing. Snyder just had them luxurious, you know, operating centers. That's, it's about the difference. Um, it's a lot less company drivers over this way. Um, when it comes to running, oh, uh, your freight, um, what's a little bit better as well. Uh, when I did my orientation, I don't know if it's still going on, but they paid you to do your videos. They paid your deadhead to come down. They paid your deadhead to go to your next, your, for your first trailer pickup. And they paid you for orientation. Mine came out to like 800 something dollars. They paid me for free, basically. And, um, and if I'm not mistaken, everybody's insurance ain't the same. Like the one guy, um, he valued this truck at like 22,000 or 10,000 or 25,000 something like that and it was super cheap for him i value mine's at 96,000 and mine's is only like 80 some dollars or something like that um so jb hunts is good the insurance is a little bit cheaper all the way around no trailer fee um with snyder you know if you take a trailer home basically with you um sorry a truck almost hit somebody in the parking lot jesus christ this man was about to be a statistic. He's about to be a hashtag. Sad. Um, but, um, oh, what I was saying was, JB Hunt, uh, with Snyder, you used to get charged $150 a day if you don't take their trailer where they, where they wanted you to take it. With JB Hunt, you could take a trailer home for four days and have it until they start charging you $50 a day. Uh, with me, I ain't staying home no four days. So I take the trailer home with me. When I come back out, I got a trailer. I don't need to drop it nowhere or nothing you don't if you don't want to take a trailer home you're going to be you just leave it at wherever you at and just dead head home you ain't got to take it no special place you know um unless unless like you down south then i mean oof, it's gonna be hard to get in a trailer you might want to keep find you a way from what they said is basically down south since the work sort of just so how can i say it uh lackluster down that way people not really you know being a day holding trailers getting them unloaded three four five days later so trailer shortage down that way is very very likely so you want to do a live unload anywhere like georgia louisiana mississippi um texas not well not texas but uh yeah anywhere around down that way but so far i know this is kind of a long video but uh yeah man I, I like it so far been here since like i say december yeah about december 5th or 6th or 7th something like that yeah i want to say yeah about to yeah the fifth and um yeah man so i would rate f2f before the little incident for their for their company and they're making strides to um be better plus they do now got a fuel discount over there i would still rate them about a six because you know the whole raycon thing and the whole broker issues with people, you know, the brokers putting things on their uh, MC and then you having to go through the whole brokers and just a nightmare with that. That's the reason why I didn't really like it. Um, the good thing about them is that you always can call one person and if you miss a call, they usually call you back between a nine and five after five o'clock. It's a wrap. Um, uh, one bad thing is if I don't know about y'all, if you ever had a time where you've been getting fuel and 
you start your fuel pump and you uh, accidentally close out the transaction like five, ten gallons in, boy, you about to be sitting a while because guess what? They have this automatic one or two hour wait so you can't even get diesel again within one to two hours. Um, but outside, that was good. Like the last little, but the last little incident is what really was real cringy. You know, charging me 500 something dollars because you didn't get the DOT inspection. But when you did get the DOT inspection and it passed, you still charged me the 500 dollars, 500 something dollars. So, you know, comment in the comments if I'm wrong about what I about this. Maybe it is my fault and I should just take the 500 dollar hit, which is cool. I still got paid like. 800 something dollars for my, my escrow they still sent me a you know a check for 800 and the 500 dollars is kind of you know making me upset but i don't really care but i mean i care because it's you know 500 dollars lost but it is what it is but uh i want to thank you guys you know staying with me um just like and subscribe if y'all can man Y'all have a blessed day. Enjoy this warm weather before the cold comes. And y'all be safe out there.